Whether you're conquering professional exams or personal milestones, we welcome you to Beyond Clean's Confidence Certification, the 52-week test prep podcast series. With expert insights, actionable tips, and engaging discussions, we'll break down the toughest concepts in sterile processing and build your confidence every step of the way. Join host Sarah B. Cruz as she embarks on a mission to help you not just prep for tests, but craft your success story. And now your host, Sarah B. Cruz. Hello and welcome. You're listening to Confidence Certification, a 52-week test prep podcast series to equip you to take your sterile processing career to the next level. I'm your host, Sarah B. Cruz, and on this episode, I want to talk about investing in your future. Hello, study prep enthusiasts. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I know I said invest in your future, and you're probably thinking, Sarah, What have we been doing this entire time? But hear me out. The last couple of episodes, we've been really focused on helping ourselves develop some focus parameters. That's what I'm calling them. It's a working title. But we've been talking about SMART goals, SMARTER goals, incorporating coaching, and even utilizing our training in facilities to firm up our education and study. These are all great opportunities and tools that can help us on our certification pathway. But this episode, I want to speak specifically to the opportunities of others helping us. That's right, folks. Today, we will be talking about the benefits of sterile processing programs and formal education. Now, before we get going on this episode, clearly I'm a big proponent for self-study and being self-aware and how to really grind in and get the job done. There is nothing wrong with self-study in your sterile processing certification pursuits. So I'm not knocking it, but that is technically a form of in formal education. What I want to spend time on is talking about the benefits of a formal program created by a professional, an instructor that teaches you about sterile processing. But what is formal education? Formal education is a structured and systematic form of learning. This is the education of a certain standard delivered to students by trained teachers typically published manuals and textbooks from the industries, organizations, and associations help provide the formal information necessary for studying. Now, as we've learned, these textbooks and these formal tools provided by association and organizations don't have to solely be used in formal settings. We've been using them in our informal self-study successes, dare I say. But when we are applying these tools and manuals and textbooks in a formal program, we are gaining the benefits of having the professional teacher, instructor, take that information, really work out all the information we need to study and teaching us how and why it's important and how to test for it. Now, formal education usually sits in a brick and mortar option, aka a building. Now, when I went to sterile processing school, I really benefited with a brick and mortar building because it told me I had to show up at a certain time. Yeah, and I was probably five or 10 minutes late for class every time, but you know, I showed up every single time. Another option for formal education is virtual. Yes, we've all seen that happen, especially during COVID, virtual education, virtual continuing education opportunities, and entire degrees are offered virtually. I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's degree 100% online. Now, the benefits of virtual is that it's in the comfort of your own home. Sometimes these virtual programs and sterile processing require a hands-on experience, so you may have to go to the school regardless to get them or they may not offer them at all. Another aspect of the virtual formal education is something called self-paced. Now, it's 100% solo independent learning with all the benefits of a formal education. Uh, Teachers outlined what you need to study. You may have uh, PowerPoint presentations, uh, you have tests, you have quizzes, all being graded or reviewed by this professional, but it's all at the comfort of your own learning pace. This could be a positive for self-motivated and dedicated individuals. 
Sometimes it can be a detriment, though, if you have a hard time staying focused and staying motivated in your professional pursuits. And if you're having that problem and you're in a self-paced program, go ahead and listen to some of the past episodes because we talked about a lot of tips that will help you remain engaged in your certification process. So we're going to take a quick break and then we'll hear a word from our sponsors. And when we come back, I want to talk about the benefits of each of the program structures and different red flags that you should look out for when choosing your sterile processing program. It's time for our mid-episode confidence boost, where we focus on a key sterile processing test concept. Now, there's no guarantee these concepts will be on the test that you take but they are key concepts to the workplace and are discussed in the literature. Today we'll cover preference cards. These are a list of items needed in order to perform a procedure or surgical case. Also referred to as a pick sheet, they are made up of itemized lines that include the name of the product, quantity, and whether or not they need to be opened by the operating room team. That's right, our partners in the OR are using the same sheet to prepare the room and surgical back table for the procedure and our patients. They are also specific to the items requested by certain doctors performing the procedure. So while Dr. X performs a total knee using one preference card, Dr. Z may have a completely different instrument lineup on their card. While it sort of feels like grocery shopping, this is a very serious task. Placing incorrect items, skipping instruments, or not providing the specific quantities can make for case issues later. The last thing anyone wants is for our patients to have to remain under anesthesia any longer than they need to or even cause a case delay. Preference cards include sterile, unsterile, and soft goods and should reflect all the items necessary to perform a procedure with. Preference cards are also used on the case cart systems like Exchange Cart or our specialty cards. That's going to wrap this week's mid-session confidence boost. Good luck. Hey, everyone, and welcome back. We are talking about sterile processing programs. A lot of this podcast series has been about how we can help ourselves. And there is a lot to be said about helping ourselves through the help of others. Yes, I want to speak specifically to formal education, formal sterile processing programs. And before we went on break, I discussed the brick and mortar buildings, i.e. a classroom, virtual opportunities, and of course, self-paced courses. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the benefits of being in a program, not just in those different modalities, but the benefits of being in a sterile processing program in general. Now, the biggest benefit of a sterile processing program is the structure it provides. Oh, the beauty of being on a pre-designed schedule. I think a lot of the first set of episodes that we talked about was how to manage our time and understand our study style so that we could study effectively. So a lot of the benefit of being in a sterile processing program is that you just have to show up and do the thing. No organization required. Maybe bring a book, You should probably bring your book and a notebook and a pen so you can take notes, right? But once you get there, it really affords you that ability to just sit down, get locked in, focus on what the teacher is telling you is important for your certification tests, right? Pretty much they are your test prep confident certification, yeah? And going home. Now, some of the issues with attending a established sterile processing program is that you may have to do some work beforehand before you can even get there. So if you're actually going to a brick and mortar school or you're trying to take it virtually, being engaged and having that set block of time may require that you have a sitter for your children or that you remain uninterrupted. Just because we're at home in our virtual self-paced experience doesn't mean that we have the luxury to not be engaged that entire time. And me personally, I know I get the pulls of doing anything else but this in a virtual or self-paced program, but that structure that all three of those options provide is so 
wonderful because it's really taken it out of our hands and put the faith and trust into the instructor to do that. Speaking of the instructor, that's actually one of the benefits of attending a formal sterile processing program is that someone builds the curriculum for you. Now, how you determine what is or isn't important for your sterile processing test prep can really be a shot in the dark if you don't have the proper tools or different routes to go about determining what's important, especially if you've never worked in the field before. Now, the benefit of working in the field and in self-study is that you understand the day-to-day operations. So you kind of have an idea of what you should be studying or why it would be important or what you do the most of in the department. Your work experience is a guiding light, a beacon for what you should be studying. Yeah. But if you've never been in the profession before and you're trying to self-study without a sterile processing program, it's going to feel like you have to study everything. And don't get me wrong. You need to study everything. But there's a way to go about it that really makes it so you're not overwhelmed and get burnt out or really want to quit before you even get going. So when someone builds the curriculum for you, the professor or the instructor have determined what is necessary to learn in order to be prepared for your test. Now, this professor is offering and lending their professional integrity, credibility, and brain power into building out this program for you. The associations and the organizations in sterile processing don't necessarily provide a robust study deck of PowerPoint slides, okay? So these professionals are making the class design for you and then teaching it to you. That's huge because essentially when you're self-studying, that's what you're doing on your own. So a sterile processing program really allows you to have somebody help you learn what you need to learn. I personally think the best part of being part of a formal sterile processing program is that it's an introduction to the industry professionals and your future colleagues. Personally, my instructor was one of my first references on my resume. Oh, Deb, she's just such a phenomenal female. And she took so much time and was very patient with me and really considered a lot of my learning limitations, especially associated to ADD. She was just such a wonderful person. And she lended her professional integrity to me to be a reference on my resume. Being someone who had never been in a human healthcare facility before, this was so valuable. Okay, because especially if you're joining the industry without any prior experience, it could be a detriment in your application process, really making sure that you stand out amongst all the people that are applying for that same job you're applying for is so important when you are looking for a job in sterile processing. Now, a lot of us, when we're getting certified, may not be in the field yet. So I want to try and give you the opportunity that gives you an edge amongst the competition. And sterile processing schools could provide that. Again, the professor being a reference and then even listing that you went to a sterile processing program. These are different aspects on your resume that can really help you stand out. Now, keep in mind, that's not me guaranteeing you'll get a job because you go to a sterile processing program. There are plenty of people out there who have gone to sterile processing programs still looking for a job, okay? I'm not making that guarantee. What I am saying is that through sterile processing programs, you are meeting industry professionals You are building your resume every time you show up into the classroom. And then you are even building the experience in your labs to put on your resume. Keep in mind that references from your instructors are not owed to you. Just because you show up to class every day doesn't mean your teacher is just going to recommend you to work somewhere. Because a reference is them lending their professional integrity, their word, for you. So you got to do a little work and earn that professional integrity, huh? That little professional gift, dare I say. Now, I just talked about how great sterile processing programs were, but I really want to talk a little bit about the red flags, okay? Because, oh my God, we are not bulls out here, folks. We are not running towards the red flag, okay? So let's look at these and really figure out how to navigate around them or avoid them completely, First, I want you to look at the word accredited. 
Now, the word accredited gets thrown around a lot by the people making sterile processing programs. The word accredited means that the body that this curriculum represents have approved and stand behind the curriculum that is being taught in this program. Many of the associations and organizations do not provide accredited sterile processing curriculum. So really be wary of that term. Okay, so especially if you're talking to an instructor and they say, oh, yeah, you know, this organization said this was a great slide deck. Eh, Stop. Pause. That does not exist. Okay, it did exist in a certain space. Uh, There were some slide decks that were approved. But since then, the professions have stepped back and allowed the professionals to make the curriculum. Now, if you're going to a sterile processing program in something like a community college, you may be able to step a little bit more confidently in that space because their program has to meet certain state requirements to even be provided in the community college setting, okay? But that also brings me to my next red flag, the instructor, okay? Even in the community college-based setting, the quality of the instructor teaching the program is important. Like I discussed, one of the benefits is that the professors make these curriculums for you. It could also be a detriment that this instructor is making this curriculum for you. Who are they? Why are they valid? You know, there are certain vetting processes, especially in the community college-based programs, in which they use to gain and hire sterile processing instructors. When you have a professional that just starts a school on their own, first of all, kudos to you for starting an entire sterile processing program. That is not easy. I personally teach in a sterile processing program at a community college. So going into even a pre-setup situation like that made teaching very easy for me. But for somebody to actually make their own program, their own school, that is just so impressive. But with that being said, Anybody can start a sterile processing school and market it, okay? And it's very easy to get caught up in the bells and the whistle of effective marketing, all right? So even if you see them on TikTok, if you see them on Instagram, make sure that you aren't just getting pulled into um, matching scrub tops or cool effects or, you know, a, a dance challenge, right? Look into who the teachers are. Go ahead and look up their names. See, look into how long the program has been around, right? I'm not saying that a program that hasn't been around a long time isn't going to be awesome because I have personally been to a few self-made sterile processing schools to meet their students and they, oh my God, I am so jealous. I want my class to be like their class, okay? But tenure and how long they've been doing something, it does make a difference. So look into that, okay? And while you're looking into that, the cost. My friends, the cost of sterile processing school is so varied. It's I can't even say it's a sliding scale. It's from like zero to $50,000, okay? So first, I want you to weigh in on the program and the quality of the instructor, because this will directly reflect in the cost of the program. The cost of the program is also determined by the length of time, how often you're in the classroom, and what comes, quote, included when you participate in their program. And in some areas, the cost also includes helping you get placed in an internship. All right. Now, depending on the type of certification that you're achieving, internship is important and a vital aspect to you being able to be a sterile processing professional. Now, if the cost isn't explained to you, that is your first red flag. If you don't know what you're spending the money on, which is more than just getting your sterile processing education, stop, pause, really look at it. Viable and valid programs have breakdowns of what you're getting 
for your buck, right? It's pretty much what the bang of your buck is, all right? Make sure that's available to you. Two, look at the cost with a discerning eye. Sterile processing is a certification-based program, okay? Your certification-based program should not cost as much as two years as a full-time student in pursuit of a degree. And that's just fact. You should not have to spend upwards of $20,000, $10,000 on a certification program. I don't care how long it is. I don't care all the benefits that they promise you. A certification program should not equal the cost of a degree program because they're of different integrities, right? And especially when a lot of the time when you're in a degree program, you're getting that professional integrity that your professor would offer you from the school. So the prestige of the school that you're going to lends you that professional integrity to say you went there, right? Like Harvard looks a certain way on a job application than, you know, your local community college. And that's unfortunate, but that's just how it is, okay? With that being said, the name of your program and the quality of your program and the popularity of your program is relevant on your resume, Okay, so yes, it's great to put that you went to sterile processing school, but if you go to a notable program that is recognizable in your area or the facility that you're going to, your school will pack more punch and you will get more ROI or return on your investment. So please look into the cost. I, I can't tell you how much a program should cost. Everything's changed if your program takes state assistance or funding, or if, you know, they have payment plans, don't forget that if you're in a payment plan, you may pay for interest. So there's so many things that factor into the cost. And finally, the curriculum. Please pay attention to this red flag. What you should expect from your program can be difficult to discern, especially if you have not been in the field before. Certain programs can offer you the world when you don't want the world, folks. We want to be sterile processing professionals. I don't need the whole world in a basket when I'm just trying to be a sterile processing professional and get ready for my certification test. Okay. So again, don't get distracted by the bells and whistles. But while the instructor is building the curriculum, please be sure it will hold what you need. So if you've never been in sterile processing and you're fresh eyes looking at trying to pick out a program, one way to go about that is that both association and organization in sterile processing offer a template for what you should focus on for your study. It's actually a percentage breakdown bracket. And if you go on both of their web pages, it's readily available to the public. It breaks down how much each chapter or concept is on the sterile processing test that you're going to take and the different areas you should be focusing in. You can use this in your self-study, but it's also a great guide to determine if you're going to get taught the things that you need in your curriculum. Now, when you ask these programs to explain themselves, how they respond is also a red flag. If they're getting all tight and, you know, kind of keeping it in and they're kind of irritable about it, that's your red flag, okay? You can't make something work if they don't want to work with you, yeah? But any viable sterile processing program should be able to speak about their program and the quality they provide readily. And frankly, they should be proud of it. And don't forget the power of a review, now, you can look up your school online to see what type of reviews that they have. Be wary of the negative reviews because keep in mind, we don't always go online to talk about how great something was. A lot of the time, we only ever hear how terrible it was. But read into the reviews and see if the issues that people are having, like they took my money and they never paid me back, or they said I would pass my certification test 100% guarantee. So you got to watch out for those guarantee and accredited. You got to see what has been promised and what wasn't delivered. And you'll usually see that in reviews online. So for homework this week, I want you to take an assessment of what you think is important for studying or learning all that is sterile processing. Because next week, we're actually going to be speaking to professionals who have built 
and teach their own sterile processing program. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for next week's episode. So if you're on the fence and trying to determine if you want to go to a sterile processing program after we've gone through all these red flags and I've scared you, be sure to come back next week to hang out with me, Bobby, and these professionals because they'll get into how they build their program, what's important to them, and it'll really help you understand what you need from your sterile processing program. So if you make this list on what's important to study, go look up that percentage percentages and come back ready and armed next week, I'm sure you'll be able to get the insight that you need to make this decision. All right, folks, see you then. And that's going to do it for this week's episode. For more sterile processing education and resources, make sure to visit beyondclean.net or follow Beyond Clean on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to check out over a thousand SPD related videos at youtube.com slash beyondclean. If you have any questions or comments for the show, you can reach out to info at beyondclean.net. Finally, make sure to download the Beyond Clean mobile app on the Apple and Android app stores so that you don't miss a future episode of any of the other awesome Beyond Clean podcasts. My name is Sarah B. Cruz, and you've been listening to Confident Certification. Until next time, keep fighting dirty and pass that test with confidence. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast series are of Sarah B. Cruz only and do not represent the companies she works for or collaborates with.